All right, here's one of our running finals of the day, the women's 5,000. There are the collegiate and meet records. And altitude will take a toll on this field of 16 runners as we look at Caitlin Tui, who has really been the distant star of this 2023 season. You're exactly right, Dwight. She has spent the indoor season going toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the best professional re pe professional runners in the country. She set that NCAA 3K record at the Milrose Games, the NCAA mile record at the Dr. Sander Invitational. And when she ran 15-15-92 for 5K at Boston, it was just two weeks after her NCAA cross-country win. She has her Wolfpack teammate in this final as well, Kelsey Chimmel, Jamil, the junior from Saratoga Springs. She actually has two with her. There's, there is a Wolfpack, three of them oh, in this Seymour. race. Yes, yeah, three of them all together for Lori Henna's squad. And when I talked with Coach Henna's for a few minutes and asked about the decision on what they would do at the NCAA championship with Caitlin Tui because she had run such an incredible mile, she said this was the most doable double with the way the schedule played out was to go with the 5K on Friday and then the 3K on Saturday. And you're seeing Mercy Chellen got get out right to the front an NCAA champion in her own right both in outdoors over 10,000 meters and in cross country and you see Tui getting right up there with her as well and then Hilda Olemomoy of Alabama as well so you've got two of the Roll Tide squad within the top three also eyes on you can catch that turquoise jersey of New Mexico that is Amelia Mazza Downey and you only get the turquoise jersey for Joe Franklin's squad when you make an appearance in an NCAA championship. You have to earn that, and you don't give it back. You get to keep that one. The rest of the unis, you got to return at the end of the season. But being that she's one who is conditioned, trains at altitude, an immense opportunity for her here on her home track. That's a, a nice tradition. Well, a lot of the athletes in the 16-runner field train and live at altitude. There are many, I would say almost half the field does. And Mercy Chilangat, who is up front, hails from Kenya, which is out at altitude, but Alabama, uh, Tuscaloosa is not at altitude, the last time I checked. <laughs> In talking strategy with Alabama women's distance coach Nick Stenoff, he said, you gotta respect your opponents in this field. There are plenty of women in this field who have run fast recently, but you gotta respect the altitude too. You've gotta base, base this race and gauge it on what everyone else kind of does. You can't wait for somebody else to make a move and when someone does make a move, or if you make a move, you've gotta do it efficiently. Control what we can do, control, dictate our own race. It's great that you have those teammates up there together. You have Olamamoy and Chelling God up there in that lead pack with one another. That's certainly going to help as they are expected to double back in the 3,000, as is Caitlin Tui, but they have different race strategies to execute. Olamamoy has run 15 17 this season, just two seconds behind Caitlin Tui. She was the SEC runner up to Lauren Gregory in the 3,000, and she also flexed a little bit of speed at the SEC championships, Hilda Olamamoy did. She split 440 on the SEC winning distance medley relay for the Crimson Tide, and she initially didn't want to run it. Stenoff said, just, just trust me, and just tell me, how, tell me how it feels after you finish. And she said that when she came across first, holding that baton, she said, oh yeah, that was pretty fun, now that you think of it. Well, I guess you could pretty much predict that Mercy Chilangot was going to try and get in the front and slow things down because she has good foot speed. So the better to, to save all that as long as she possibly can, and I'm certain that the smart women in this field are going to know that that's what she's doing and try to turn it into a more honest pace, but the, the altitude is the X factor here in doing that. That's why you would think that some of the athletes who are solely focused on the 5,000 and they do not have the 3K to account for tomorrow would be the ones to be aggressive up front or at least in the midpoint of the race, try to stretch this out and punish those who are going to attempt to double back. So I would be interested to see how things are going to stretch out here as these laps unfold. And you mentioned how impressive Mercy Chellingott has been. She's not afraid to go up to the front. She has 
that championship resume. So you almost wonder what brought her back for another year at Alabama. She just had some unfinished business, and part of that is right here what you're seeing. This is an opportunity for her to stack that collegiate resume and then potentially in talking with the coaches at Alabama, eyeing eventually a move to the marathon in preparation for 2024 and eyeing an Olympic opportunity at that distance. But we've seen Caitlin Dewey really develop in her race execution over her collegiate career. She's typically been one of those guns straight up to the front, but she has really developed in terms of her race acumen over a multitude of distance. Coach Hen has told her when you're doubling, you really want to be careful about how much you're how much energy you're expending in that first event. Yeah, she's always been comfortable going out, getting up to the front in races because that's what she did for so much of her high school career. Now, when you're among collegians, you're able to feed off of the field around her. So now she's comfortable, you know, with throwing a surgeon in the middle of a race or running people down as we saw her do at the NCAA Cross Country Championships. So John, you're down uh, trackside and you've had a lot of opportunity to talk to and watch Mercy Chelan got over the years. Uh, what, is, uh, what is your take from there? Well, uh, two things. One, when you talk about Caitlin Tui, not only is she a great runner, but she's a really, she's a great athlete. And maybe that's nuanced, but there are a lot of great runners in this field, but all around, she is a great athlete, can do a lot of different things. I think she'd be a great soccer player and other things. And, and Larry, you brought up the coaches at Alabama, and it's been a strange couple of months for them as they lost their coach, Will Palmer, right at the beginning of the year. And uh, Ameris Tynesma immediately left Alabama and transferred over to NC State. And Mercy, that's part of the reason she came back as a senior, was to run for Will. And that put some ripples in that team that they've had to overcome that have nothing to do with mileage and training. Um, it's getting used to a, a new guy and a new voice in their head. I'm just amazed that no one is challenging Mercy Chalanga, who has to be thrilled that she's being able to call the pace here now uh, with 16 laps remaining. I know that a lot can happen, but she has really pretty much bided her time for the first mile. And you're catching Tui glance over to the inside of the track. Not sure if someone is catching that left leg or following a little bit too closely or she's anticipating someone making a move. But, you know, to John's point about the coaching shuffle at University of Alabama, in talking with Nick Steneff, he's been on the job five weeks. This is week number five for him. So this Alabama women's distance squad started the season with Coach Palmer, and then Dan Waters actually took over for a period of time. And these were all different systems that they were learning under and different styles of coaching. So such a testament to how adaptable those athletes have been so far this season and some of the adversity that they've endured to get to this point. And man, it is a bunch up to the front. You need somebody to start as we're getting here kind of to the midpoint. Somebody needs to break this race open. Well, I keep waiting, but no one seems to be interested in doing that. And Mercy Jalangot's got to just be thrilled. Certainly a big boost of confidence and comfort for Olamomoy to have Mercy doing so much of that work up front. They train each and every day together. They run all of their workouts together, and that has been a huge benefit to Olamomoy, who has had a bit of a breakout season. Coach Deneff said that Mercy really gives Hilda that reassurance. They want each other to do well, but they're not reliant upon each other. They certainly want to carry one another, but he told them, do not hold back. If one of you doesn't go with the other, keep with your race plan, your race execution. You're looking here. Seems like Tui is starting to get a bit anxious as that field is bunching up. You know, I just hate seeing that because that's when you get crashes and burns. You've got to have some place to run. And an indoor track is much smaller than an outdoor track. And, and you don't want to be logging extra meters, especially at altitude. So there's a dilemma that develops as we start to see things just stretch out ever so slightly. But up at the front, the top five or six, maybe an eight, are far too close to each other. More than half the race run now. For Utah, that is Emily Venters, the senior from Lawrence, Kansas. Oh. 
really not much has changed from the beginning. Venture is one of those, the beneficiary of the altitude, very well conditioned to enduring that. And I believe that this is her sole event. This should be her focus at this championship event. So one of those who could benefit greatly from challenging and pushing the rest of the field to be more aggressive in the latter half of the race. Well, let's just count. We got two from New Mexico. Oh, and there's a little bit of traffic right there. That's the trouble that you were alluding to, Dwight, right there. We're starting to see it. And then Chalang got swiftly goes from first back to tie for fourth. I was going to mention two from New Mexico, one from BYU. We got Northern Arizona, Colorado, Utah. So you've got almost half the field that lives and trains at significant enough altitude where they wouldn't be as bothered by this. Now, immediately, Tui picks up the pace a bit with Ventner right there. Olamomoy is also still there in third. And Chilangad has got in a position where she at least has some room to run. Venter's looking incredibly comfortable. She's run 15, 20, 37 this season, and she's a two-time NCAA cross-country All-American. Really, no one is out of this at this point. Chilang got now going wide and seems interested in taking the lead back or just staying out of trouble. Of course, worth noting with Caitlin Tui, if it comes down to a kick, there are few people who can hang with her. The collegiate record holder in the mile, and she also split a 427 on an anchor DMR leg earlier this year when she did that. She was really surprised how easy it felt to do that. She came off so much strength in cross country, and Lori Hennes said, we believe that strength is speed, and the miles, both open mile and within the DMR, that Tui has put together have proved exactly that. She found a lot of new strength in route to that NCAA cross country season. And then in, when she transitioned over to the indoor season in track, she found a new level of turnover. We've seen her speed be even more impressive than previously. One mile remaining, and you can see that the pack is now stretched out significantly over the course of the last lap and a half. Chalang got back in the lead, picking up the pace. Tui right there. Olamomoy also there. Venters has now dropped back a bit into fourth. And I'm sure Chalang got is well aware of the speed of Tui. They've raced before, they've raced at championship levels before, incredibly familiar with one another. It is threatening that you have the two Alabama athletes up there together that can push this and rely on one another, but you're starting to see Tui wind it up as they enter the back stretch. Separation has happened between the two Alabama athletes and Tui. Coming up to 1,200 meters remaining. And what benefited Chilang got with that early, slower pace also benefited Tui. Six laps remaining. Olamomoy holds the advantage over 5,000 meters over Chelengat. She ran a little bit faster than Chelengat did this indoor season. Keep in mind, when Olamomoy ran 15-17 this season, she was just two seconds off of Caitlin Tui's collegiate leading mark. And she looks really relaxed in third position. It seems like Alamoy is just gauging on when Caitlin Tui plans her move to get past Mercy Chellengott. Hilda Alamoy is certainly going to have to go with her and challenge her. Five laps remaining. And Alamoy has put it in a position. She's been in third most of the time, which means that someone's been pushing the, the air beside, uh, aside for her. She's been able to draft ever so slightly, whereas Chalangat has taken a lot of air by herself, as has Tui, because she's running on the outside of the lane. And I do believe we should see all three of these athletes back in the 3,000 meters. The last woman to win the 5K, 3K double, Carissa Schweitzer of Missouri, back in 2018. Just 800 meters remaining as they go past the start finish, and Tui now goes into the lead. Olamomoy covers 
that move very quickly. Chilang got dropping back into third. Olomoy makes sure to not get clipped by Mercy Chellingott. You could see she kind of signaled to make sure she had enough distance to settle in just behind Tui of NC State. Kelsey Chamel of North Carolina State, the teammate of Tui, now make her, her presence known, catching up to that group of three, but is she expending a lot of energy to do so that will hurt her in the long run? Three laps remaining as they go past the start finish. This is where you've seen the maturity of Caitlin Tui growing at the NCAA level, plotting her move and executing with precision, not getting too anxious and making that move early in the race, knowing that not only does she have the kick, but also she's trying to be as tactical as possible to pull off the double. The lapping Natalie Cook of Oklahoma State. The Cowgirls freshman. Two laps remaining now, and Tui with a little bit of a gap that she was able to develop over Olomomoy, and she feels it, and she goes with it. Olomomoy does not have a response, neither does Chilenga. She found a crack. She found a crack in the door, in the window. She found that opportunity, and she had to exploit it, leaving nothing to chance. She respects the athletes in the field that are surrounding her. Actually, Dan O'Brien asked her in the press conference about who her greatest inspiration is, and she said, it's my teammates, those who I draw inspiration from, who I train next to every single day, and you can certainly feel how she is channeling that right now. Tui has put 20 meters on Olamomoy and Chalenga. She is going to be the winner unless she gets hit by a truck. So the sophomore from Stony Point, New York, who has two Wolfpack teammates in this NCAA final, is going to win the first of what would be uncertain many more NCAA championship titles. Olamomoy of Alabama will lead the Crimson Tide to a second, third finish. That's 14 points for Alabama in this 5,000, but it was Caitlin Tui who ran a smart race plan with help from Mercy Chilen got the first 10 laps and manages 1609.65 at altitude. And waits there to congratulate her teammates. Also a big hug there for both Chelengat and Olomomoy as Caitlin Tui captures that indoor title. And feels like, yeah, she seems like that she has plenty left in the legs to come back tomorrow. She was plotting this move for a while. Takes a quick, quick glance up at the clock. Laps remaining. Also, that big video board to see where her exact positioning is. We talked about the turnover and how much she had grown within her speed over the course of various distances. That was what Lori Hennes was crediting her with over the course of this 2023 indoor season. And she stretches out that stride to precision over the course of the back stretch. Throws in a big surge and then as she ensures the victory she gives the little wolf pack signal there with both hands as she crosses the line she is your NCAA indoor 5,000 meter champion and she'll be back for more in the 3,000 and great to have a couple of teammates there with her the time is inconsequential due to the conditions and also as a result of the slow early pace there are the official results with Caitlin Tui, the NCAA champion. A second and third place finish for Alabama with Hilda Olomomoy and Mercy Chilengat. So 14 points for Alabama. NC State with a first, fourth. So that's 15 points for the Wolfpack in that 5,000 meters, as well as an eighth place. That's another point. So 16 total points for NC State in that women's 5,000. And John Anderson, he's downstairs with the winner. All right, well, we're trying to gather up all of the All-Americans from North Carolina State in that race. So we're waiting for Sydney Seymour. Uh, we've got water here for Caitlin Tui, the winner. We also have Kelsey Camille. Um, first off, we'll start with first place. but. Um, Slow pace for most of the time. Yeah. You seem to let that go and be comfortable with it. Why? What was the strategy for you? Um, 
co-tennis and I decided to wait until 800 or less to go. Decided to try to save energy for the 3K tomorrow, and we just thought that with the altitude, like, it wouldn't be smart to hammer it. So I stayed patient, but I had to go to the lead a little bit early to keep my position because I didn't want to get boxed in just because on the, the tight turns it could be dangerous. So um, 800 to go, I started squeezing it down a little bit, and last two gave it a really good effort. Turned around and saw Kelsey coming in and then Cindy, so that was awesome. Uh, we talked about this a little uh, yesterday, but moving up from second last year to first this year, the difference is what? Uh, it's big. Yeah, I, uh, it was really bittersweet last year, so I got my redemption, but uh, we still got the 3K tomorrow to focus on before I could uh, celebrate. Kelsey, how much does just having the three of you in this race together help pull three of you through in the top eight? I think it means so much to us. I mean, you could probably see that we were all like looking for each other a little bit during the race and like being, trying to key off of each other. And it's really comforting and really helpful for all of us, I think. Gary said, you don't look that scary at all to me, but what, what do I know? Uh, just run angry. Oh, run. How angry were you then as you were running trying to chase down an all-American place? I was back for, uh, with a vengeance, as they say. Yep. <laughs> I didn't have the best indoor season, but these guys always pushing me and encouraging me has been beyond what I can put into words, so I'm really grateful. Uh, it is a wolf pack. Three all-Americans, three gals that also helped them to the cross-country national champion. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you. Dwight? 